Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my session. I am Ardal Elver. I am representing Siemens, the leading German technology company in industrial digital solutions, smart infrastructure, and smart mobility. At Siemens, we focus on technologies that transform our customers' industries and solve the world's most pressing issues. That is what we call technology with purpose to transform the everyday. In the following, I will focus on some core technologies, especially those industrial 5G, grid edge, and connected mobility with some business examples. What are the world's most pressing issues? They are coming with the five megatrends. The megatrends, they are changing our world and challenging us. And at Siemens, we want to shape this change and address with our technologies the challenges coming through the megatrends. Climate change, for example. Forest fires, floods at an unprecedented scale shows how urgently we need to address the climate change. Growing economic development as we did in the past, where we are, in fact, utilizing all the world's resources, we cannot continue on this. We have to do it in a more sustainable way. And we have to do it with using less. And this can be done through technologies which can help us to optimize our processes and reduce CO2 emissions. Globalization, the next megatrends. And this is also changing because focus is more or more on localization. That is also what we call globalization. And in the past, we have put the biggest production plants at the place with the lower cost. This is changing as we have seen through the recent pandemics, especially the supply chain are now very vulnerable. With technologies like 3D printing, digitalization, or, or automated manufacturing, we can manufacture products with smaller scale, more closer to the markets where we need them. Digitalization is the next, next mega trend. In fact, uh, it has accelerated through the recent pandemic and it will change the boundaries. It will blur the boundaries, new business models will increase and also we will work in ecosystem across boundaries. Companies who can change their processes, business models will survive. Again, the key is here, adapt our businesses and provide digital solutions to our customers. Demographic change, well, it is continuum. Our world population is aging despite the, the lower birth rates because we are having higher life expectancies and this, is, this is also needs to be addressed through different technologies. More and more people are now looking for job and seeking opportunities in cities. So the urbanization is also continuum and also creating challenges to the city infrastructure. And here also we need to provide solutions to the city infrastructure where we can run things in a more optimized way with less CO2 emissions with higher quality of life. So all this, again, cannot be solved with the old way solutions. We have to find new ways and utilize technologies to address those challenges. And uh, that is what we say, the world is changing, which is much more real than ever before. And, and the, the challenges coming through like pandemics and, and crises are in fact forcing us to optimize things, to do things in a more flexible way. And we say this can only be done through technologies and especially through digitalization. And in this context, it's also important to say combining the real world with the virtual world, creating digital twins, is one of the key solutions which will help us to address the challenges coming. So in the future, we will have intelligent manufacturing, intelligent energy management systems, intelligent buildings, intelligent grids, which will help us, again, to address the challenges I have just addressed. Once again, technologies are the key to address the world's most pressing issues, and that is also what we say, transform the everyday through technologies. 
At Siemens, we focus all of our energies to stay competitive in all the markets we serve today and tomorrow. And we believe the core technologies are the key to address the challenges, again, coming through the megatrends as I have just introduced. And those core technologies are, for example, additive manufacturing, autonomous robots, connected mobility, cybersecurity, and many more, as we can see on the slide. In the following, I will focus on those three areas, connected mobility, distributed energy systems, and future of automation. Those technologies are in fact critical technologies transforming the key industries like industry, infrastructure, and mobility. And industrial 5G, I will give some examples in the industrial sector, grid edge in in energy management, energy systems, and also connected mobility in the area of mobility. Let's start with the first one. Industry 4.0, uh, industrial internet of things, smart manufacturing, smart mobility, those are the future of manufacturing. In order to design, produce, manufacture products, production plans, infra logistics, we need proper communication framework and also connectivity. And industrial 5G is the answer for those challenges, which can help us to do things in a better way and also help us to implement the industry 4.0 technologies. Because through 5G, we have a higher bandwidth which is helping us to send and receive data in a, in a higher bandwidth. Um, according to, to first estimations, it can have the speed up to 10, um, 10 gigabit per second, which is 10 times more than five, uh, 4G technology. And with lower latency and higher reliability. And also we can connect much more devices and participants in this, in this system. So as we see on the slide, at Siemens, we are working on those technologies to provide our customers and with this, again, implement the industrial 4.0 technologies and run the, the, the industrial manufacturing operations in a, in a better way. What we can all do, there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of areas which we can address by, by the applications with industrial 5G. Again, using 5G connectivity, we can design products and, and production plants in a more efficient way through simulation, through, through, uh, through augmented reality tools, through autonomous machines and, and autonomous logistics, and also providing solutions to the edge machines. So those are just some examples what we can all do with the industrial 5G. And at Siemens, we have already started with the first application. And this is some a project which we are doing together with our partner Qualcomm. And this is in our automotive test center in Nuremberg, where we have set up pilot plant to show what possibilities we have with the 5G and, and demonstrate what is all possible. I'd like to share with you a short clip to introduce uh, what we can all do respectively what we did in, in our plant in Nuremberg. Let's watch the short clip. How will 5G change the industry of tomorrow? That's what we will find out today at our automotive test center. Oh look, there's the action. That's 5G at work. It will be able to provide reliability as high as 99.999% with a sub 10 millisecond latency. Data speeds 10 times higher than today's 4G and a connection density as high as 1 million connected devices per square kilometer. It's all being tested right here in our industrial 5G proof of concept. To be more precise, in the first private standalone 5G network in an industrial environment using the 3.7 GHz frequency band. Here's one of the future applications we're testing. The operation of automated guided vehicles, AGVs equipped with a 5G modem. All signals are processed in real time. Thanks to seamless connectivity, the AGVs can communicate while on the move and react to any unforeseen situations. 
And now, take a look at the heart of this private standalone 5G test network, equipped with Qualcomm 5G technology. And operated with Simatic automation equipment and Simu fleet control from Siemens. Siemens and Qualcomm Technologies are working together to pioneer future solutions for industry with 5G. We've achieved the first milestone on the path to connected production, maintenance and logistic. That's the future and we're serious about it. Very serious. Siemens, ingenuity for life. In the following, I would like to talk about the changing energy systems and especially the role of the grid edge. Our energy systems are changing, changing dramatically. And this change is mostly driven by decarbonization, where we're integrating more and more renewable, renewable sources into our energy systems. Through decentralization, means energy will be generated in different, different locations and needs to be integrated, and of course, through digitalization. And the old models are replaced through multi-dimensional, multi-directional models where renewables needs to be integrated into the grid and where also producers, respectively consumers, turns, turns into producers, what we also call prosumers, which needs to be also managed by the grid. And this all, of course, can be properly managed through utilizing digital technologies, respectively IoT technologies. The major change is, is coming at the interface between the energy supply side, which is more regulated, and on the energy demand side. So new solutions will appear because, once again, we need to manage the integration of different energy sources into the grid, but also we need to manage new models, integration of certain new energy sources by buildings, respectively also integration of the e-mobility, which also needs e-charging solutions. And this interface, what we call grid edge, where new business models, new solutions will, will happen. And that is also the area where we at Siemens are working together with our partners and, and providing solutions to our customers to manage this change at this interface. And at this interface, it's an ecosystem is happening, respectively arising. In the ecosystems, again, on one side, the energy supply side, which also integrates different energy sourcing, energy generation solutions into, into, into the grid. But on the other side, we have smart buildings, smart offices, smart transportation, which also needs to be integrated uh, properly through different software solutions. For example, buildings will be able to generate their own energy using solar uh, panels, for example, and can decide when to use the own generated energy, respectively store it, or even push back, respectively sell back into the grid. So there are a lot of new opportunities which are arising in the middle, in this interface, what we call grid edge. I'd like to share with you two, three examples. Here, uh, my colleagues have worked and, and integrated a digital twin of the Finland's power grid. In the past, um, the operator, utility operator, is spending 80% of times collecting the data and 20% of their times analyzing and acting based on the data. This has been changed with the integration of the digital twin of the grid. Now the operators can spend just 20% of their time for collection of the data and using their majority of time for managing the grid. And here, more importantly, the new solution, the digital, digital twin of the grid provides solutions where the operators can not only operate, but also the asset management but also infrastructure planning means when is one substation, for example, aging, when, when do we need to make certain maintenance work, respectively, when do we need to replace certain substations. So that is, in fact, 
only possible through having a digital twin of the, of the, of the grid, which also helps, of course, the operator to focus their work on balancing the, 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 the energy supply on one hand, but also managing the grid and, of course, the infrastructure in the grid on the other hand. And here, uh, the, the available has increased to 99.999%, which, which was, of course, not possible in the, uh, in, the, in the earlier times with all technologies. And, of course, the digital twin also helped the, the operators to expand uh, the, 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 the grid if new features are available, respectively, if new investments are needed. Just to share uh, one example from, from North Europe. Another example from, from the similar region, also my colleagues have provided to one of the biggest shopping centers solutions where the shopping center can manage their own energy consumption by even generating their own energy, storing it and deciding when to use uh, their own energy respectively when they can uh, utilize the energy from the grid. So that is, again, only possible through digital solutions where we can have, again, intelligent digital solutions which can help us to manage the, 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 the building operations, especially uh, optimizing the energy consumption of the building with this, of course, reducing the CO2 emissions and also uh, the integration between the building and, 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 and the smart grid. So this is again another classical example of what we need to do it on the grid edge. Um, of course, we are also working on solutions here in Taiwan and our energy IP is this solution where we can gather all the uh, major data uh, from, from, from different places and also with this help to manage and, and adjust the, 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 the operations on, on the grid. My colleagues are working on this project, and this is in fact uh, will be will be operational by 2022, which will help us, of course, TPC to to manage and also increase the energy efficiency and stability of the of the grid here in Taiwan by again utilizing our energy IP solutions, which is again a very powerful IoT platform with with energy data management system. I'm moving to my last and next block, and here I will share with you new solutions, digital solutions for a better mobility, connected mobility in cities. Again, digital solutions can help us to optimize the traffic flow, for example, in cities, with this, of course, to reduce the CO2 emissions in the cities. Here, the technology which, we are, which I will introduce later on is called vehicle to everything, means connecting the vehicles with different uh, uh, infrastructure in, 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 in the traffic system. And we also call it vehicle to X because I can connect the vehicle to, to, to traffic lights, to, to other vehicles or to, to buildings. I like to just share with you the trends coming through the, in fact, next generation of solutions in, in, the, in the mobility. In the past, and maybe also today still, most of the cars, we are owning them. We are, they are standalone, they are not connected, and they are running mostly with the combustion engine, and usually we enjoy driving ourselves. This is changing in the future. In the future, cars will be shared, there are a lot of examples happening already today in, in Europe, in different cities, car sharing examples. The cars will be connected to the surrounding, uh, let's say, traffic infrastructure, like the traffic lights or, or buildings. Most of the cars will be electric vehicles. And also in the future, we will have more and more autonomous driving vehicles. So that are the trends uh, coming. And all this is possible, of course, by having digital solutions and, and, of course, connectivity solutions between different infrastructures. I'd like to share with you on the slides, it looks a bit crowded, but just, just, just to see what is all possible and what I mean with connected traffic systems. And this will, again, be only possible through digital solutions on one hand, but also utilizing 
the 5G technology I have just introduced in the, in the, in the, in the industrial context. Also with the 5G technology, we will be able to connect the cars with each other respectively with, with, the, with the street infrastructure. And again, the goal is here digitalizing of the street infrastructure where we can provide better solutions for traffic flow. Also, we can help to provide autonomous driving solutions and of course with this optimize the, the traffic flow in the cities. Allow me to share one, two examples. For example, and in, in, in the, in the one, we might connect um, the, the cars with the, with the traffic lights that drivers can get in advance the time when the next traffic light will change that he can adapt his, his, his speed according to the time remaining. Or providing to the buses, for example, uh, a, a certain uh, um, uh, the right way of, 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 of moving which can help, of course, the, to, to the flow of the traffic to run in a better way by having, for example, adapted uh, green respective to the red lights where the buses can go through without having a congestion. Or in case of emergency, we also need to provide to the, emergency, uh, to the, to the ambulances the, the open ways because every second counts, right? This can also be optimized by connecting the ambulance with the traffic lights respectively with the next uh, closed hospital and having the way free for the ambulances, which they can utilize to go uh, much faster than, 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 than earlier times. So those are just some examples where we can utilize the so-called vehicle to X technology to run the flow in, in, in cities in a better way, optimize the flow, of course, with this reduce the CO2 emissions. I'd like to share with you two examples. The one my colleagues have uh, done it in, in Manhattan. In Manhattan, as you might know, is one of the most crowded cities in in US. And my colleagues have um, uh, supplying certain um, uh, systems, including onboard units for around 6,000 vehicles and around 650 roadside units which help, of course, to optimize the flow of the traffic, as I have just tried to share with a couple of examples. And with this, of course, once again, we avoid congestions. We, we help to run the traffic flow in a more optimized way. And with this, of course, we can reduce the CO2 emissions in, in, in cities. And of course, we are doing the same also here in Taiwan, in, 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 the, in the Dan Heist, together with our partner, uh, my colleagues are now providing the, our vehicle to, 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 to X technology and traffic control and uh, for, for a new town. It's our first ITS and 5G project where we can utilize those technologies to, to show how autonomous driving can, can work in cities like Danhai and which would also again help us to run the, the, the traffic flow in a more optimized way and also help us to implement autonomous driving solutions. Those are just some examples I have just shared. And as I said, technologies are today helping us to address the, the world's most pressing issues. And we are very much confident that by deploying the technologies I have just shared with you, we can help to run the things in a more optimized way. We can combat climate change, we can support the urbanization, we can utilize digital solutions, and of course, with the power of technologies, we can transform the every day. That is it. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we will post this page also in LinkedIn. That is my, my, my link to, to LinkedIn. Welcome to comment and share also your thoughts with me. Thank you very much.